Welcome to the first module. We begin our course by grounding ourselves with core ideas of what education for sustainable development means and why it's important to infuse into all aspects of our education systems and how we teach. We'll discuss how ideas and frameworks of education for sustainable development, or ESD for short, have evolved over time and explore what ESD aims to accomplish, what competencies and skills learners should come away with, and how implementation might look in terms of various levels of government and institutional policies, school community partnerships, and responsiveness to youth voices and needs. What are some ways that various stakeholders can help make it happen, considering some of the common barriers and opportunities that exist? In this module, you will begin to understand the kinds of transformation in education and systems thinking that are required and how you can start using these ideas as instruments through your work. First, we'll hear from some experts and key stakeholders on their ideas of what ESD is and some of the historical evolution of this topic that led us to our current understandings of what can be called education for climate action and climate justice and the current framework of Sustainable Development Goal 4.7, which aims to ensure all learners acquire knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including among others through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles, human rights, gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace and nonviolence, global citizenship, and appreciation of cultural diversity and of culture's contribution to sustainable development. There was a meeting at the White House on this topic, and we had all these leaders from, you know, all these div disciplines focused on teachers. And we all kind of came to the self-realization, group realization, I guess, um, that what we're talking about here is fundamentally all disciplines, all teachers, not science teachers, not earth system science, all teachers. And all forms of education are critical to the issues of how education can support humanity effectively addressing climate change. In my personal experience, I had no knowledge of environmental degradation until high school, and that was only because of my vocational high school. So coming to realize that if it wasn't for these specific courses that I wouldn't know about sustainability, that I would continue living my life uh, without implementing uh, basic things that can help the environment, um, it became so real to me that people need to know more about this. It's not always educating about sustainability. The highest and best use of the term sustainability is not as an issue, certainly, and not even as a topic. It's a preferred future. Um, uh, it's an aspiration. Um, that is the purpose of the, of the term. Sustainability, thrive over time. And regeneration is even better. It's leaving the place better than we found it. So those are aspirations. Those are the purposes of education. We can't talk about sustainable development as though it's just a green version of the status quo, right? That's, that's not sustainable. That's still inequitable in many ways. It still excludes people in many ways. So I think we, to, we really need to redefine that in a much more radical way, a much more feminist way, in a much more inclusive way. The loss of habitat is related to climate change as well, and those factors are responsible for the rise, you know, the increasing frequency and severity in, in pandemics that we're seeing. So if anything, uh, this, you know, global pandemic should be another kind of um, wake-up call for us. It's valuable to understand the long history of environmental education and education for sustainable development in order to figure out what we must do differently to finally make ESD a priority across learning spaces. Education for sustainable development grows out of the field of environmental education, which dates back to at least the 1960s. The early evolution of environmental education saw the field move from a discourse based in the natural sciences to one largely focused on building individuals' awareness of their own responsibility toward the environment. With the Belgrade Charter of 1975, discourse on environmental education moved further towards socio-ecological approaches that encouraged explorations of intersections of environmental concerns with issues such as poverty and injustice along lines of race, gender, and class. Following the 1987 Brundtlin Report, which first introduced the concept of sustainable development as the ability to meet the needs of the present without jeopardizing the ability of future generations to meet their own needs, the 1992 UN Conference on Environment and Development in Rio de Janeiro came out with Agenda 21, which emphasized the role of education in promoting sustainable development, bringing environmental education together with development education and with it more radical learner-led approaches. 
ESD was further emphasized during the UN Decade of Sustainable Development from 2005 to 2015, when United Nations member countries were encouraged to mainstream ESD into their formal education systems with detailed policies and practices. Yet even with these numerous initiatives continuing to enrich and deepen the global understanding of what ESD is and how it can be integrated into all types of learning in various education settings, it is still commonly implemented as a standalone subject without adequate emphasis on learners' individual and collective agency to bring change to address urgent sustainable development challenges. So how does SDG 4.7 help us build urgency and push for integration of ESD across subjects and learning spaces? Our key recommendation is really to prioritize the key themes that are sort of encapsulated in Target 4.7. And I think we need to start with, uh, with really what are the main challenges we are facing at the local level, at the national level, at the global level. And I think if you approach it from that uh, angle, then there's no, no way around climate change, really. I think everyone would, uh, would, would agree that climate change is really the biggest uh, challenge that we are all facing. Then climate change, of course, is not only sort of a narrow environmental uh, issues, it branches out to many, many other things. It, uh, there, there's conflicts that are related to climate change. There's, um, there's other environmental topics, the oceans, for example, that are related to climate change. And there's also, uh, maybe most importantly, now for the next steps, the whole economic dimension, the whole question of how our uh, societies and economies are structured. Um, uh, and that sort of at the moment uh, lead, lead, uh, lead to climate change. So I think uh, uh, climate change as an entry point also then later on allows you to talk about all these other issues. Using the UN Sustainability Development Goals is a, is a good way to help people understand that this is an issue lots of people are talking about and it's, it's helpful to use the same language as other people around the world in approaching these. What's really important to us is to zoom in and be really local and then zoom out and connect to all across the world and students and schools that are experiencing this. Their perspective is coming from a local perspective. They know the other students in their class. They probably know what's happening in their communities. And they might even be advocates, a lot of them are, um, within their own community. How can they push industry and businesses and communities to be more sustainable? And then making that global connection. Because it can show them that, hey, you're not alone in what you're doing. What you are doing is going to contribute to a larger movement. And there are both careers um, as well as, you know, action opportunities for you to get involved with. Now we've heard about what ESD is and why it's important, but what exactly does it mean to teach ESD? What are some of the core competencies and skills that learners should come away with? The experts we spoke with encourage us to think broadly beyond subject area silos in pursuit of ESD that is relevant to young people's lives, that promotes their sense of agency and empowerment to make change, and that encourages empathy and solidarity across different populations in pursuit of a more just society that will be more able to tackle these big sustainability challenges together and create the kinds of economies and jobs that will prioritize sustainability and equity. Let's hear what they have to say. What I have seen happening in the last several years is that a lot of children and young people and college students are being educated about unsustainability which is not at all the same thing as being educated for sustainability and a regenerative future. Uh, it's quite different. We know that we need to make sure people understand enough about what's going on in the world so that they realize things need to change and they can come up with creative ideas uh, to change them. But we can't tell them so much about what's going on, uh, the problems without helping them understand what some of the solutions are and what the different way of thinking is that is going to be required in order to get to those solutions. How can you teach and learn transformative engagement? How can you teach and learn activism, if you wish? And we have seen youth activism has become more and more prominent and more and more important. Fridays for Future being a case in point, Me Too being another case in point, Black Lives Matter right now, case in point. If you'd ask me, what would you want children to know once they exit school? It would be knowledge about the sustainable development goals. It would be global citizen values. And it would be 21st century skills. And for me, the 21st century skills entail creativity, conflict management, thinking outside of the box, innovation, 
checking what is fake news, what is right news, what is, what is correct, what is incorrect, um, being able to work in multicultural environments, being digital savvy and equipped enough to, to do all of this. Values, global citizen values, are connected to identifying yourself not only in your own sphere, but having sort of the, the gaze beyond your own limitations and borders and cultural uh, idiosyncrasies. And SDG knowledge is a given because that portfolio will be the job market of the future and will be definitely the make or break for our planet. We're really trying to push how we conceptualize green skills and sustainability competencies to include generic capacities, specific capacities, and transformative capacities. And so when we think about, you know, like ESD or climate change education or SDG 4.7, like when we think about the kinds of technical solutions that are needed in order to achieve either sustainable development or, you know, a renewable gener regenerative greener economy, whatever your, your kind of end goal is, there are specific capacities that are needed. There are specific sectors, specific jobs that are needed to be created in order for that to happen, right? Within that, there are specific capacities that are needed, you know, whether that's coding, engineering, construction, uh, environmental management, business skills, marketing skills, research skills, data skills, you know, specific skills. Then there are those generic capacities, what we're calling green life skills, or you can call them green civic skills, or you can call them green 21st century skills. They're basically, you know, things like communication, problem solving, critical thinking, um, teamwork, negotiation, leadership are 21st century skills, but oriented towards a more sustainable green world, right? So, so we did think about critical thinking for what purpose, problem solving for what purpose. You know, you could name however many skills you, th you think are important and wh whatever reason why, as long as they're oriented towards the achievement of, of sustainable development or the achievement of more sustainable equitable systems. And then the transformative capacities, the third um, sort of bucket of skills, are those that are really um, aimed at addressing the inequitable systems that we are sort of structured in. It, it's, they're aimed to disrupt, um, to transgress, to really push for more so, so socially sustainable and socially equitable systems, human systems and human and natural systems, or human natural relationships. Systems thinking, futures thinking, um, what we're also calling like solidarity, um, a value of uh, inclusion and um, indigenous knowledges, the ability to recognize unequal relations of power, collective action, political agency, skills and capacities that are aimed at social change. We want kids to develop perseverance skills. If perseverance is one of the attributes that we want to give kids a chance to practice and develop in themselves, um, then you look for opportunities in the curriculum to do so. Um, and it saves a lot of time, by the way, over time. If you want systems thinking, if you want to teach kids about the commons, for example, the places and things we share that we all depend on and are all responsible for, which is a core content area of education for sustainability, instead of classroom rules, which every student wants to break as soon as they see the list, um, you talk about agreements for sharing the commons. It's a completely different way to think about it. And then as they get older, they begin to understand, wait, the commons is cyberspace, it's our community, it's trust, it's the sound in the room, it's the air, it's the oceans. The commons are everywhere. They've been invisible to us. And so who's tending them? What are our rights to them? What are our responsibilities? What are the social norms we need? What are the legal norms? Um, so that gets more sophisticated over time as you um, have learning progressions. So each of these areas of education for sustainability is a lens. Everything we do is about helping kids learn, build the capability to thrive over time. Cohesion occurs when we take down the classroom walls and identify those compelling issues that require broad thinking and creative problem solving. Um, for example, in what course is environmental justice tackled? Is it exists locally, it exists regionally and globally. Why can't we tackle that? as an issue, a topic, a phenomenon that can be looked at through the lens of integration, integration of all the subject areas. The more that we learn about specific policies and specific things that are happening in the world, like the better citizens we can be. Um, so I definitely think that's something um, to at least learn about. I also think it's important for people that are learning about climate change in Western nations to understand the impact that 
United States and other Western nations have on countries in the global South and how we go into countries to extract like oil and other resources from them, destroying their environment, destroying their communities, and then take it back to our country to um, profit off of it. I would caution educators from giving like a good picture of what SDGs are and um, invite educators and students to think of them more critically and think of um, actual better ways to address international climate change. And that's more solidarity based and redistributing resources to the co countries and communities that need it most. So what do education institutions need to do to make this happen? What are some of the different roles that education institutions and stakeholders can play? And what are some key considerations? We recognize that there are many challenges in building the kind of systemic multi-stakeholder support that it takes for ESD implementation. And we hope this discussion offers some practical and helpful tips for educators and other stakeholders to refer to in beginning your ESD journey. There are structures at a national level that are important, but ultimately the most of the work is gonna be done at a sub-national architecture with a state, county, municipal, business, you know, community. And so, you know, as soon as you realize that, progress can be made at a sub-national across, as opposed to national. Education is working with sub-national climate action. At, like I would infer key principle one in the context of this conversation is partner with the state, partner with the counties. They're doing climate actions. They need you to understand and build the social support to do these actions across the decades. Students need to learn uh, the specific instances of that action and how they can take it further. It's definitely time to have these discussions, um, not just discussions, but actually just start teaching our uh, school age kids, um, elementary, middle and high school kids, uh, definitely in our state as well as the country and the world um, on climate change and how they can make a difference. We should also ask those in the community to join the conversation. This list may include local non-formal educators, town administrators, elected officials, and those who have a vested interest in ensuring a sustainable future for our town and for our students. Bringing an array of stakeholders into the conversation and providing autonomy will ensure organic, transdisciplinary, not interdisciplinary, but instead transdisciplinary, actionable list of ideas. It's absolutely critical for educational institutions to take on um, the task of teaching about climate change to all students. Currently, I think it's being done here and there. It's not comprehensive. It's not pervasive in every subject area, in every grade level, in every school. And that's my vision because uh, schools are the one place where we um, can guarantee we will reach all young people. Extracurricular, after-school activities, you only reach the students who are already motivated to learn about this. And in terms of educational institutions, you have the resources to do research, both broad and deep. Since every student and faculty is potentially a researcher, you have tremendous capacity to compile information for the rest of us to use. And the revised New Jersey standards include climate science and climate change across subject areas. Once these standards are operationalized, they will be a conduit through which schools and communities can be connected to climate change. It's really important when we're thinking about change in K-12 systems that we're not just talking about what's happening in, in classrooms. It's also what's the footprint of the schools and the school division and the school systems. We're all wedded to this, it was good enough for me curricula from the past. And except for the instances where teachers are innovative in the classroom, we're still teaching the same content and in mostly the same way in our comprehensive high schools where college prep requirements dictate what courses are offered and what courses students take. If we can change the graduation and college admission policies about what is taught in schools, we will instantly open those doors for curricular innovation. I definitely think that college-wise, there's a lot of work to be done. Like I'm at Northwestern now, and there's an entire club dedicated to just trying to get the school to like not invest in fossil fuel companies. And I don't want that club to have to exist. Like that's their only goal. And we, we haven't accomplished that yet. Higher education institutions leave out a lot of I think core ideas about climate change, um, specifically like indigenous environmental activism and telling the story of the land 
uh, these higher institutions are occupying and how most of it has been stolen from indigenous people. And they're also not very, um, they have a bad relationship generally with the local community. I think institutions could do so much better to help the local community because we have so many resources, but it doesn't go to the local community and people that like really need um, support fighting against a fossil fuel industry or trying to protect themselves from climate change. Projects uh, taken on at, by higher education may come into play. And through the community outreach, they can communicate with local uh, about the local environmental issues and possibly connect the community with citizen science projects or other projects of, of, of that type. Now that we've learned more about what SDG 4.7 and Education for Sustainable Development aim to achieve and who some of the key stakeholders are to make it happen, what are some of the first action steps that we can take? Whether you're an educator, parent or caregiver, student or community advocate, one key first step is to find out who your key decision makers are who have the power to help lay the groundwork for effective implementation of ESD curriculum. This might include your school superintendent, your local school board, your state department of education, and your local and state legislators. Next, you'll want to research whether there are any existing efforts to push for pre-K through 12 ESD or related curriculum in your state or locality, such as curriculum revisions at your state's department of education, initiatives within your city or school district, or other legislative efforts. If specific efforts are already underway, you can use your own voice to call or write to your decision makers to encourage them to co-sponsor or otherwise support these specific efforts. Then find out what groups or organizations, whether formal or informal, exist in your space who may be interested in championing these issues and helping to formulate specific plans that can be implemented at various institutional levels. If you're a teacher, that might be your teacher's union or any professional associations you're a part of. If you're a parent or caregiver, that might be your PTA or any local parent advocacy groups you're part of. If you're a student, what organizations exist at your school or in your district or community? And if you're a community member passionate about these issues, what local advocacy organizations, businesses, nonprofits, or local government agencies champion similar issues or might be interested in lending their voice to this cause? One great starting point is the Climate Reality Project website, where they have an easy template letter that you can use to send a letter to your state Department of Education encouraging them to adopt climate change curriculum standards. All you have to do is visit the website linked on the screen, put in your name, zip code, and email address, and click send. Taking this action yourself and encouraging others in your network to do the same are great first steps. We've reached the end of Module 1. In our second module, we'll learn about ways educators can begin to integrate ESD into their curriculum and lesson planning, discussing considerations including teacher mindset, incorporating social and emotional aspects, various pedagogical approaches, and ways to prioritize learner empowerment and action. Thank you for participating.